I'm Franka, I'm 24 years old, and I'm the German Youth Delegate to the United Nations. And I'm a law student and very active in youth participation and why youth should be included in decision making already today. I'm Naji, I'm 23 years old. I'm the Swiss Youth Delegate to the United Nations. And I currently study economics and politics. And I've become youth delegate um, last summer, and it has been a very um, important experience and also very interesting to see how the UN works and how we can, in a, how we can give young people a, a voice inside the UN system. I think one of the key values within multilateralism is that you really consider um, inclusiveness, because inclusiveness is really by definition of multilateralism. If it's not an inclusive um, space where you really hear to all the voices that are relevant to, to, to global issues, it, 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 cannot really, it cannot really solve the issues that it tends to, because you might have issues that are relevant to a certain demographic more than to others. You might um, also, across time, you might also have to consider that there are, uh, that there are people not born today that will that will be affected by certain decisions today. And, uh, and, uh, and I really believe that these, these, the value of inclusiveness really plays a very important role. I think that's a really good point that you say, who is affected by a decision should be included in making that decision. I think this is also really a part of multilateralism that you say, okay, it's not only your country affected by certain decision, so it shouldn't also be only your country who, who who decides on what will be done. You should work together with others who are equally affected. It's the same thing for us as youth delegates that we say, okay, it's our generation that will be affected the longest by decision made today and why today's policymakers really think just in terms of the next election cycle, we want them to think in terms of the next generation um, in long-term effect. So I think it's really uh, where multilateralism and youth participation really well fit together the sense of um, there's more than your own perspective. You have to take a step back and look at who's affected by the decisions you're taking today. And actually, in fact, um, I would like to add to that, it actually strengthens the multilateral system if you include all the voices, right? You, when, you, when you include young people, women, um, people that are right, right now mostly more disadvantaged in the UN system, they the incre including them really increases legitimacy to the multilateral system, and it provides um, for, for a, for a co-leadership and co-ownership to that system. And it's really, in the end, it's not really a courtesy done to multilateral, it's not a courtesy that the multilateral system does to young people to include them in its system. It's actually helped the multilateral system itself to, to include all the voices because it increases uh, the understanding people have for it. Yeah, it's really about this notion that a good outcome is also created when you include a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different expertise and that you value all also expertise who is not classical expertise in a sense of, oh, this person has studied 20 years the subject. I mean, this is very, very important expertise to be included in decision making, but you also need different perspectives and people who are affected by that decision to have a say in this is what the decision means to me and this is the perspective I'm bringing in, this is my experience, and besides maybe this really classical sense of experience. So we have to value different kinds of experience and include them in decision making on an international level. Um, I think the, the, the discussion between expertise and, and experience is also a very important one that you just mentioned, um, because that's also the reason we youth delegates exist, and I think it's what um, or added value to that system that we provide, because we, for example, might not have the, the expertise, let's say, of someone, as you said, and had um, a, a long experience, a long uh, career in the UN system in multilateralism. But we provide for a perspective that is that that is directly affected by 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 certain decisions that are being taken today, and that also makes decisions better, better and more legitimized. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we as youth delegates, we were both youth delegates to the General Assembly, and we participated um, in the negotiations of, of the youth resolution of the third committee. And what we saw um, as, as youth delegates there was really interesting because there are also many other youth delegates that participate in the negotiations um, of that youth resolution. And we all shared 
a common experience. Um, we had a, had a common um, view on certain things across countries, and that was really interesting because someone might come from a country that maybe has officially a very different point of view than, let's say, Switzerland, for my case. But as youth delegates, we related to each other. We had the same experience. We were always the, the youngest people in the room, and, and we, we, could, we could really feel each other's, um, 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 each, each other's um, interest for, in that resolution, and that really was a, was a unique experience. I think what really surprised me that just came to my mind is that decisions at an international level are not as complex as you might think they are. So I know that when I walked first into the General Assembly Hall, I was really starstruck. And then after 20 minutes, I thought, oh, okay, it's just a really, really big room. And it, it suddenly feels a little bit smaller. And also when you listen to the discussions of the officials or also during the resolutions that we worked on, on the youth resolution, I really, for me, it came to realize it's really, it's, that it, there are so human interests behind that, like everybody wants to be part of the group and wants to be accepted in a group. It's like, it's, I think for me, this was really the thing I learned most in this year is that also decisions on an international level, multilateral decisions, are not that far away from normal human experience, that there are people who are angry with each other or don't like each other, and then it's not easy for them to agree. And also this experience that during COVID, it was really difficult to meet on the hallway and discuss some things out when you didn't agree, and that this made the multilateral system more difficult to work because you don't have this playground of drinking a coffee in the hallway with each other when you don't agree before. So I think for me, this was what really struck me in my personal experience is that it's that it's a, it's a really normal place, just like when you work somewhere else where people agree and disagree. And I agree with Naji that as youth delegates, we share so many experience, and at the same time, we also felt like um, so many youth delegates were excluded. There, were, there are very little youth delegates from the Global South. If Europe is really dominant in the international youth delegate community, and just that such a huge part of youth is missing, I think is maybe also something that, that struck me really. Mm -hmm. And I think th yeah, that really played a very important um, role in my experience um, at, in multilateral diplomacy that as youth delegates, we are really overrepresented. Like European yeah. countries, Western countries are very overrepresented and there's really a need for young people from, from developing countries to, to also have that platform of youth delegates. Um, and that really goes back again to the definition of multilateralism, right? You, you, we are only, we have youth representation, but the youth representation that we have today is very one-sided, and we really need more youth delegates from, from other, from other sides of the world. Yeah. Nobody's waiting for you. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I think uh, what Naji always says, and I think that's really, really fitting. So you have to claim your space. You have to know why you're expertise is important. Because the people there, they, they're running in their system, they, they know how things work, and they don't know why they should include now your expertise when you studied less time than them. So I think to come in and to say, no, but what we bring in is the voice of a generation who's, I mean, 50% of the world's population are under the age of 30. There's so, so many young people in other continents. And I think just to have that self Confidence, confidence, confidence yes. and also persistence in the end. You have to really go into the room and be sure that you, that you have something to say, that you have, that, but you have to be really be sure about it, right? You go into yeah. the room and you have to, to, to claim that the space. That you add something and valuable yes, yes. as a young person. Yeah. Because, I mean, too often in, 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 in those, um, in those, at those tables, um, they might overlook you or they might think, oh, they're just there to, to, to take pictures with us and there's really a problem um, that as a youth delegate that you always risk running uh, to be um, tokenized yes, yes. and you're not really adding something. Yep. And then you might ask yourself maybe like after a week or after an event, oh, what was actually my, uh, my added value here? Was I being tokenized yep. or, or did they take me seriously to say something? Yeah, or if, what often happens to us that there's an extra table created for youth and that they tell you, oh, you can create a position paper and then you can hand it over 
and then they just throw it in the trash so they don't even read it. So to claim a seat at the table and not let yourself be dragged into an extra room on mm -hmm. an extra table, I think this is really something one has to be careful as you delegate. And that happened to us quite often that we looked around, we were like, wait, but these are just young people. It's I just mean, us, yes. We think it's great that there are other young people, but we want to talk with diplomats, we want to talk with officials, we want to have an intergenerational dialogue. We don't have to want a dialogue only with other young people. We want to work together with other generations and other countries. Of course, the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, also the discussion with other young people. That's already part of our mandate, right? Yeah. That's what we do in our countries. And at the UN, we would really like to speak to people of power to, 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 to lobby for our for youth interests. I mean, there, is, there, there are plenty of youth associations. Very often, young people are reduced to climate change, but I mean, in terms of uh, associations, young people are active in peace and security. Um, I think also that's why we saw the Youth Peace and Security Agenda of the Sec uh, Security Council, um, because they're also the ones most affected, for example, in, in various conflicts. Um, they are the ones that will build countries again after civil wars, for example, um, but also the ones that are suffering a lot um, in those regions. Um, in terms of human rights, for example, young people are active as advocates, as human rights defenders in many countries. Those human rights defenders are very, very young. And, and I really believe uh, young people have an added value in so many topics. They are at the forefront also of the SDG implementations in many places um, regarding reducing inequality between the genders, but also ending poverty. Um, young humanitarian um, um, uh, professionals, There's, there, I think it's, it's really a, a plenty, uh, plenty, plentiful um, um, the, the places where young people are active. Yeah, I think this is one of the reasons why we advocate so much for youth participation in the international system is that young people are change makers at this moment. They're on the ground, they're running projects in their communities, they're, they're projects of young women for, for schooling for young women. Right now, young girls are protesting in Afghanistan for their rights to go to school, there are change makers and they can push forward new agendas. And this is beyond climate change and, and the Fridays for Future protests. There's so many young initiatives um, of young people who advocate for a variety of different topics. So I agree, definitely. Absolutely, and also they, they, they provide out of the box um, solutions, right? They haven't been so long in, in those systems they, they really have like a fresh perspective, a, a young mind, and they don't think in terms of, um, let's say, um, this is impossible, just already when the idea comes. And, and also within the UN, for example, um, people or mandate holders are very reduced to their mandates, and young people really just try to go a bit further and a bit like above um, the, possibles, uh, the possible lines yeah, we have. I think this is also where sometimes the frustration comes from, because pro and processes tend to take quite long on a multilateral level. And I think this is what we both experienced when we talked with young people, that they were always asking, but why is this issue still not solved? If it's been three years, how is it possible that they haven't found a solution yet? Mm -hmm. uh, I think this really active spirit sometimes Let's do something. <laughs> yeah, let's do something today and not let's, let's not wait. Yes until we have the mandate or, or until, until, until everyone agrees on that, because certain issues are just urgent and they need to be treated right now. We, we need a multilateralism that delivers, and often today multilateralism doesn't deliver or only delivers after a very long time. So I think uh, young people are also needed to really push forward the agenda and ask um, why, why is it not working faster? Why can't we find a solution for this today and not, not make 10 more talking rounds and try to find a solution in 10 years. No, we, we want the change now and today. Multilateralism is something that I consider really optimistic and positive. And young people in general are way more positive um, <laughs> in regards to the United Nations than the older generations. When, when there are questions, how do you 
uh, do you think decisions should be taken just within your countries or multilateral? Young people are more likely to say they should be taken multilateral. And I think the um, multilateral system really depends on on 50% of the world's population giving them this the, the space, uh, the space, and and giving them the trust that they can solve today's problems. And I think that's what they why they should lean in into this young generation who gives them so much trust and help them take decisions that are meaningful. Um, but also, young people relate to peace and security and development and all sorts of topics at the UN. It's really important that, you, that we keep that in mind, that young people are not only included when it's about climate change, but also with regards to all other topics. Young people um, provide fresh perspectives. They, 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 they're, 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 they're affected in, in, in any kind of topics. When you want legitimacy for your system, and if, if you want international decisions to stay legitimate and people following them and believing in them, um, because it is so much about trust and believing that the system works and that you sh should follow international rules, I think you have to include the people that are affected by the decisions. Because when you don't include them, um, the problem is that they will just ignore the decisions that are being made on an international level. Why should we get involved in the SDGs when, when we didn't have any say in how, how to create them? Why should we follow them? I mean, for, for me, I think the direction comes a little bit from, uh, the question comes from the wrong direction because um, it was multilateral diplomacy who implemented the SDGs, who, who made the decision, this is the direction where our world will head. And it's actually the people on the ground and civil society and communities who have together with the governments, of course, to implement the SDGs and this is, this is something for everybody to join and to be active. So I think um, international diplomacy and multilateralism is the outer form who says this is the direction we have to go, but the ones implementing are the people on the ground and young people and women and just different communities. The multilateral system is ready to, to implement and help implement the SDGs, but th when there is a crisis, it really shows that it's not really sustainable and that, that in the end, when, when we talk about vaccination and vaccination equality, it's really fast, every country just f for themselves and not thinking about a, a global picture of health and how, to, how all young people can stay in school, but it's really about your country and your community and your people. So you're absolutely, not ready yet. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it, it, we had a crisis and immediately we forgot the value of multilateralism, right? We saw countries just closing their borders while forgetting um, that it is a global issue and the global issue requires a global solution. Yeah. The, the beauty of the SDGs, just as you said, is that all countries can agree at least which direction we want to go. That is, that, I mean, to me, that's already a very, um, a big um, achievement that we already have, that we can at least agree <laughs> on these 17 goals. And they have already done also the tremendous help, I think, to, to, to put um, all countries more or less on, on, on one common agenda, right? Also really good practice in long-term decision-making because the SDGs were running for 15 years. That's much longer than a normal election cycle. And I think one of the problems for reaching the SDGs was or is that, that it's long-term what multilateralism should be and international community should look at, they should look 15 years in the future, not three. There's no other option. <laughs> so it's, you cannot ignore it. That's the way we have to solve the solution because it's the only way, uh, it's the only way to solve problems. And so we have to follow this path and, and come and help us and make it better and make it work, make it effective. And for that, we, we need your help and need you to join us. And currently, it's all we have and it's the best thing that we have at the moment, right? 
I think multilateralism has a future, and the future for multilateralism for me is, um, I mean, we have to understand it's not only about states. Um, I think that's the most important issue. When the UN was created, states were the center um, of, of, of the global, uh, of global politics. But nowadays we have, we have um, aspects that are really transnational. We have a society um, that is connected to each other, that has, that, has vo that has a voice in different countries, right, depending on the system. And the future for, of multilateralism for me is really that we give also sp space, that nation states really give space um, to all the diverse voices that exist outside um, of the nation state, because also that would probably also help to provide better solutions um, to, to, to those issues that multilateralism would like to treat. I also agree that multilateralism has to change in a direction that it's um, solving long-term issues and not only short-term crises. And at the same time, a lot of different voices have to be included who aren't included enough today. I mean, we both went to the United Nations, the average age of a United, with somebody working um, at the UN or uh, of diplomats, is, is far above the average age of, of the world's population. So there, um, most of the ambassadors at the United Nations are men. There are barely, barely any women at the United Nations. So I think this is really something that has to improve, and I think the future of multilateralism will be younger and more female and more diverse and Absolutely. more people yeah. from the global south. So I think this will be the future of multilateralism.